Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the relationship between relational aggression and personality disorders? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now, when we talk about relational aggression, we're talking about behaviors that are intended to damage interpersonal relationships and social status. And we see that this can be done through manipulation, or social exclusion. To help answer this question, I'll be using a study that was published in 2018 by Reardon and colleagues. And what they did here was they looked at relational aggression as it relates to the five-factor model, and then the five-factor model as that relates to personality disorders. So this really features a clever way to explain and explore the relationship between relational aggression and personality disorders. Now, we know that relational aggression is a problem for a variety of reasons. Some of the behaviors we see in individuals who are relationally aggressive, of course, cause damage to other people, as I indicated. And we see examples of this aggression, like spreading rumors, threatening to stop talking to someone, or excluding someone from a group activity. And we know that this causes this damage to the victims, and this has a variety of consequences there. But relational aggression also has negative consequences for the aggressor. For individuals who perpetrate relational aggression, we see a higher risk of mental disorders, including personality disorders, difficulty in school, and peer rejection. So someone who's relationally aggressive causes damage in interpersonal relationships, but then themselves experience rejection from their peers. We also see with relational aggression that it is a consistent pattern of behavior. It's an interactional style that doesn't appear to be isolated and discreet, but rather consistent and stable. It also tends to develop early in life, as in late childhood or early adolescence, and it's associated with interpersonal instability and jealousy. So of course, with this understanding of relational aggression, it's easy to see a connection specifically to personality disorders and even more specifically to cluster B personality disorders. That would be antisocial, borderline, narcissistic, and histrionic personality disorders. Cluster B personality disorders are considered the emotional, dramatic, and erratic cluster. Prior studies have shown an association with all of those personality disorders in cluster B, but particularly with antisocial personality disorder. But overall, of course, there's not a lot of research on relational aggression and personality disorders. So as I mentioned with this study, they looked at relational aggression and they tried to determine a five-factor model personality profile and then use that profile to see how it aligned with certain personality disorders. Because of course we can conceptualize personality disorders using the five-factor model. So with the five-factor model, there are five personality traits, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. We can remember the five-factor model traits through the acronym OCEAN. So I'm going to go through these personality traits and then talk about the findings from this study. So it's important to remember here that with each personality trait, there are six facets. So for example, any particular construct, like relational aggression, could have a negative association with some of the facets on a particular trait and a positive association with others. And we saw that a few times here with the five-factor model and relational aggression. So let's start with openness to experience. Openness to experience is a tendency for somebody to have imagination, creativity, and to be intellectually curious. With relational aggression and openness to experience, no relationship was identified. This is the only trait where this happened. Now taking a look at conscientiousness, here we see a tendency to have cognitive, behavioral, and emotional control. Now the findings here were interesting. It was a negative association with the facets of deliberation, self-discipline, and dutifulness, but a positive association with achievement. So an individual who is relationally aggressive would have a higher level of achievement on average. So here we see an example of how there can be a negative association with some facets and a positive association with others on the same trait. Now moving to extroversion, this is a tendency to be actively engaged with the environment. And here, in terms of relational aggression, there was only one facet that really stood out, and that was assertiveness, 
and the association was positive. So as we saw more traits of relational aggression, we saw higher levels of assertiveness. Now for the agreeableness trait, we see a tendency here to be empathetic, polite, cooperative, and kind. And really here we saw a negative association with all the facets. So in particular, straightforwardness, trust, modesty, and altruism. Now with the last trait, neuroticism, we see here a tendency to experience negative emotions. And here we saw a positive association with depressiveness, angry hostility, vulnerability, and impulsivity. So when we look at the profile that was generated here on the five-factor model for relational aggression, and we compare it to what we know with the cluster B personality disorders, really the personality disorder that stood out the most, that was the most similar to relational aggression, was narcissistic personality disorder. These two constructs share low agreeableness. They share the high score on the angry hostility facet of neuroticism and the high score on the assertiveness facet of extroversion and also the relatively higher conscientiousness facets. So what I mean there is with antisocial personality disorder and borderline personality disorder, we see lower conscientiousness and with narcissistic personality disorder, it's a little bit higher. So it's still a low score overall, it's just a little higher than we see with antisocial and borderline. So there are a lot of similarities between relational aggression and narcissistic personality disorder, but also a lot of similarities with antisocial personality disorder and borderline, and there doesn't seem to be hardly any relationship with histrionic personality disorder. So some very interesting findings about relational aggression and personality disorders. It's important to keep in mind, of course, that if someone is relationally aggressive, that doesn't automatically mean they have a personality disorder. In order to have a personality disorder, someone would have to meet the full criteria for that personality disorder and be diagnosed by a licensed and qualified clinician. What we see here is just really an association. This also doesn't tell us about causality. We don't know if the personality disorder constructs lead to relational aggression or if relational aggression leads to the personality disorder constructs or if some other factor leads to both. There are a lot of potential explanations for this relationship. So this really just gives us information that we can use to better understand the construct of relational aggression. I hope you found this description of relational aggression and personality disorders to be interesting. Thanks for watching.